Hi, my name is Kent Wakeford. I am co-founder and co-CEO of FormBio. I'd like to share a little bit about my background and why I'm so excited about FormBio. When Andrew and I co-founded Colossal Biosciences with Ben Lamb and George Church of Harvard University, Andrew and I saw the opportunity to leverage the power of data and analysis to accelerate the biology discovery process. Colossal applies cutting edge advancements in synthetic biology to address issues of loss of biodiversity, species preservation and restoration. Coming from the software and data science you know, viewpoint, Andrew and I led the creation of a platform to help advance the cutting edge work being done by the scientists in the labs at Harvard and the Weiss Institute, you know, focused on CRISPR and genome assembly. This is when the light bulbs went off for us. The platform that we created not only could help scientists at Harvard and the Weiss Institute accelerate discovery, but it could also be applied to much broader fields of synthetic biology and even beyond. This light bulb moment led us down a path to the spin out of Form Bio and the company's much broader focus. As computing and software innovations advance exponentially, there's a serious disconnect between what is possible and what is practical for the biologists leading life sciences. This creates a big problem in efficiency, bandwidth, and discovery timelines in what is today a golden age of biomanufacturing for medicines, materials, biofuels, food alternatives, and so many other synthetic biology innovations. When biologists are spending their limited time learning how to create and wrangle Python scripts or trying to organize terabytes of data, they're not spending that precious time on biology. And outsourcing to a bioinformatics core, conversely, can be time consuming and, and a bottleneck in and of itself. Hi, I'm Andrew Busey. I'm the other co-founder and co-CEO of Form Bio. At Form, we've been building an amazing team that spans both software professionals and biology experts. We think this combination helps us really create a new offering, a new platform that will empower biologists across the world to do more. We feel like the combination of those two things really builds a platform that spans the, the things that you need to do on the tech side, which includes DevOps, you know, make everything run, the actual software to do the work, workflows, data management, data science, and bioinformatics, of course. All these things have to come together to deliver the next generation of advancements in biology. And we think that there's a lot of brilliant biologists out there who are spending way too much time working on computers, trying to wrangle them and, and get the data and the, the workflows to run, get the results they want, put them together. There's a lot of back and forth. And we've tried to bring together a team of people across these different categories to build something that really pulls in the best of both worlds. So we have a, a deep understanding of software and building next generation consumer products and enterprise software so that it, we can build something that's easy to use, that scales, accesses the very large data sets that are common across biology, allows them to be shared easily across companies or continents, and allows the execution of complex or simple uh, workflows on, on these data sets or custom data sets that are, that are built to deliver new results, analyze those results and visualize them, and then to share and publish those results. I'm a product manager here at FormBio. My background academically is in molecular physiology and biophysics, where I worked on technology development in the field of microscopy and took that into a postdoctoral fellowship at the NIH, where I continued working on microscope tech development, but also moved into software and um, uh, artificial intelligence for image processing and analysis. And that brought me into the tech space. One thing I'm really excited about with FormBio is the opportunity to create great software for computational biological data analysis, and also to contribute to setting standards for rigor and reproducibility and transparency in artificial intelligence for machine learning and deep learning models. With that intro, I would like to demo the environment that we have for our FormBio software. When you enter our application, you'll be landed on a home screen. 
which is here, and the home screen will show you what project you're in and what is going on in your project. So from this one, you can see that there are 370 recent workflow runs. There are featured workflows, which will rotate, and you can see all of the members in your project. This view will give you a summary of what is happening in your project for all users and all runs. And from here, you can navigate to the rest of the application. The way that we have this organized is that when you're invited to enter the platform, you will be invited to an organization. And that organization can have any number of projects that you may be invited to. And so when you enter your project, it may be a specific project for a type of data that you're trying to analyze, or it may be a project that's specific to the question that you want to ask, which will have a variety of different types of workflows and different types of data to analyze. It may also be a collaborative project where you have a bunch of members in the same organization, so in your company or in your lab, or it may be a collaborative project where you have members from inside your organization and members outside your organization. So it allows for a lot of flexibility in working on different types of data, different types of people, and different types of processes and analysis. So from here, when you're ready to upload your data, you'll go to our files tab which will provide you with the main file structure for that project. And you can add files or you can add a folder. If you add files, you can just drag and drop or you can select your files or folder to add. Once you have data on the platform, you're ready to launch your first workflow. So on our left navigation menu, you'll expand the workflows menu and you'll go to launch, which will take you to our library of more than 30 workflows that are ready to run. On this page, you can scroll to see the workflow that you're interested in. You can filter on the left by category. So perhaps you're interested in gene therapy or genome editing, which is where our CRISPR workflows live. For today's purposes, I want to show you our RNA sequencing. So I'm just going to search because I know exactly what it is that I want to run and I'm going to find RNA-seq expression analysis, which is tagged for functional genomics as well as next generation sequencing. And once I enter the workflow page, I'm taken to some documentation tabs. Our inputs tab will tell you what you need to have ready to run the workflow. And our outputs tab will tell you what you can expect to get out of the workflow run. And finally, our citations tab, which is linked to the overview tab with our summary will give you all of the academic citations that you'll need to understand exactly what's happening in the workflow that you're running. And that presents us with the opportunity to provide academic rigor and transparency, as well as give credit where credit's due for having built the original algorithms. When we're ready, we're going to click run workflow, and that's going to take us to our workflow launcher for the RNA-seq expression analysis workflow. This is a step-based guide to help you get your workflow set up properly without having to write any of the code or set any difficult parameters. So the first thing you're gonna do is select your folder and it'll pop up with only the file types that are available. In this case, we're gonna to go to pipeline validation and RNA-seq. And now we have our path for the data that we're gonna use. We're gonna to go to sample attributes so the sample attributes tab only exists for workflows that require things like a sample group or a sample ID to provide metadata context for the type of analysis that you're going to run. We're gonna select our reference genome. So we have a series of organisms that are available that we've already uploaded. And we go to an advanced configuration tab. If it happens that you have advanced configuration features for the workflow that you're running, then that will be here. Lastly, when you're ready to review and submit, you will be taken to this last confirmation page. You'll notice at the bottom, the run workflow button is not active yet. And so you have an opportunity to review, make sure that you have selected all of the settings that you want to use. So for our purposes, because running this workflow will take about 15 minutes, we are going to cancel. We're going to get a modal that uh, a prompt that allows us to make sure we're ready to lose all that work we just did. 
And then what we want to do is go look at a run that's already been completed so you can see what the output is. The one that I want to do is this one because it's most similar to the settings that I just set up. And so this will take me to a series of tabs with which I can evaluate the output of the workflow we just ran. And we see a workflow run results, which gives us a variety of data here about the QC for the analysis that was done. And so you can see read count per gene type here. You can download these tables if that's what you're interested in. You can quickly see, for example, in a sample comparison heat map or a sparsity table uh, graph, excuse me, uh, the sum counts per gene by the max count and a PCA. So these are designed to give you a quick glance of whether or not it is worth pursuing the rest of the results from this analysis. If you go to the analysis tab, now you've got more features with which you can explore the results of the workflow. So here, the default is gene type, but we can also look at a PCA analysis where we can adjust the parameters based on whatever table we used for the design. We can look at scatter plots. This will provide us with the volcano plots that we're accustomed to seeing for upregulated and downregulated genes. You hover, you can see which genes they are. And from here, you can interact with these graphs in a variety of ways. Next up is our files tab. The inputs tab will give you all of the settings that were used to run the workflow. So should you want to run it again with the same settings, or should a colleague on your project want to reproduce your results, then you can see in the inputs tab what the settings were for any given run to rerun it. Okay, the last thing that I'll show you today on the platform is our member management. So I mentioned at the very beginning that you can have members from within your organization and members from outside your organization. You can also assign them a role based on how much access you want them to have to to the data that's in a project or the workflow output from any given workflow run. And so from here, you can add a new member and you can put in their email address and select their role, and then they will get an invitation to the platform to the project. I hope you enjoyed touring our FormBio platform and we look forward to your use of the product. So now that you've been introduced to the Form Bio platform, let me tell you a little bit about why you should be excited about it. The workflows that we have put together and validated with our internal team are computationally optimized to run very quickly, and they don't require any coding know-how to run them. And so the major benefit that you get for running our Form Bio platform is that it will make your workflows and your data analysis and processing and data storage more efficient. And that will make your day-to-day getting to the conclusions for the questions that you're asking in your research, whether it's clinical or bench science, much more efficient and rapid. And also the collaboration aspect will permit you to work with internal and external collaborators to reach insights that you may not have had as easy access to. And future developments will include even more exciting visualizations and even more exciting features. So for now, happy forming.